Your Starlink internet speeds are going to get faster if you live in one of these places. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of focus and that is it. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a tech day. We're gonna be talking about Starlink and how if you are located in one of these 21 places in the United States, you are going to have lower latency and faster speeds coming to you very soon. All right. So basically what's happening is Starlink is expanding. They're building out and they are building more than 20 ground stations, brand new ground stations, and they're putting them into operation very shortly. But the key here is these ground stations are going to be using the E band instead of the KU and the KA band. And I'll get into that in this video. But before we get into all of this, I want to say that if you haven't downloaded any of my ebooks as of yet, go check them out. Go over to jchristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash books. Also, if you just want to say thank you for all of my hard work, there is a thank you button down there that you can push. If you don't want to do that, that's okay too. Even better, just simply become a member of the channel. And if you want more Starlink content, I'll put a link right over here to my Starlink playlist. There is a ton of helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, commentary, what to do, what not to do, what to buy, what not to buy, and of course, the why behind it all. This channel is all about the why. Also, you guys have been asking me about that VPN. I'm currently using Pure VPN, and if you would like to get a VPN to secure your business as well as your home data with 256-bit encryption, as well as being able to have a static IP address and do port forwarding, the nice folks over there at Pure VPN gave me a link, and that link is gonna give you 80% off. So down in the pinned comment, as well as the description, check that out and get your discount. So let's jump into this. Now, I was reading a couple of articles all over the place about what is going on and this expansion with SpaceX Starlink and the speed increase, number one, with more ground stations, but more importantly, what we're gonna be speaking about is this E-band and why is this being used? I was reading an article and they quoted this guy named Ethan Owens. He is the CDN reliability engineer over at Netflix. And he provided some insider, maybe roadmap, I guess you would call it, insider information about what SpaceX Starlink is doing, the direction that they're taking. And it is very, very interesting. And I think you guys are gonna want to hear about this. Once again, if you are in any of these locations that I'm gonna tell you in just a second, you're gonna find yourself with faster speed, lower latency, better reliability, and probably you're not going to have as much congestion. Now, last month, SpaceX Starlink filed with the FCC permission to upgrade 21 or build out 21 ground stations, which would include E-band capabilities for greater uplink and downlink and a bunch of other niceties that I'll tell you about in just a moment. The translation here is there's going to be new ground stations and chances are these ground stations are going to be near you. And if they are, you are going to benefit. Now here you can see what one of these ground stations looks like. It's basically a cluster of antennas that are typically placed or mounted onto a gravel bed and it is surrounded with a security fence. I'm gonna give you a list of locations. Now look at this list. Maybe I'll put the list here that has city and state. I'm just gonna give you verbally the states, but look here and I'll probably put that list in the pinned comment as well as the description if you wanna cross-reference it to see how close you will be to these ground stations. So the new ground stations are coming to South Carolina, Nebraska, Alabama, Tennessee, Georgia, California, Oregon, Texas, Washington, New York, Illinois. Now, Illinois is kind of special. They are going to get three ground stations. Maine, Maryland, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania is also special with two ground stations. So once again, I will put those cities here to the side as well as in the pinned comment and the description so that you can cross reference it to where you are. Now, Owens also said that, quote, with these new locations, SpaceX has applied for 99 unique gateways, gateway translation, ground stations, across 40 states and territories, Guam, Puerto Rico, and 38 states. So that's 40 in totality. 
He also noted that SpaceX has filed with the FCC for a special temporary permission to operate its gateways, ground stations, in the E-band while the FCC reviews the full application. I'll get into this E-band thing with you in just a second. Hang in there with me. Now, in Port Matilda, Pennsylvania, Starlink was given land development approval for one of these ground station facilities. Check this out. The approval was for the installation of 32 antennas on an 88 foot by 153 foot gravel pad at 67 Sawmill Road. And as you can see, this is 67 Sawmill Road. Now, let me get in here, zoom down a little bit. You can see this is literally in the middle of nowhere. Let's zoom in here a little bit. So they're going to be leasing, or SpaceX Starlink is going to be leasing this property. And that's what SpaceX Starlink likes to do. They put these ground stations in the middle of nowhere. As long as they can get power to it, they are golden. And that's what's happening here. Last month, the FCC granted SpaceX Starlink permission for 7,500 E-band capable Generation 2 satellites to be launched. That's nice. Now, that isn't the amount that they asked for. SpaceX Starlink asked for 30,000, but I guess 7,500 isn't bad to start out with. Now, these Generation 2 satellites are slated to be launched in February, but it's my understanding that back in December, right around, I think it was the 28th, they launched about 54 of these Generation 2 satellites already. Now, don't quote me on that. I think that's what happened. And if it did happen, figure on about anywhere from two to three weeks all the way up to two to three months before those satellites are in operational orbit. It takes a while for them to get there. So either which way, we know that these Gen 2 satellites with E-band capabilities are going to be launched here at the beginning. Let's call it first quarter of 2023. That is amazing. Now, getting into this E-band and what the hell is it? Currently, SpaceX Starlink uses the exact same broadband communication that satellite television uses, which is that KU band and the KA band frequencies. Now, they're really good for sending data. It's a really big, wide spectrum, but it's heavily used, right? Well, this is all changing. Now that SpaceX Starlink has asked for the approval to use the E-band, things are going to get hot. They're going to get fast and more reliable and lower latency because of this E-band. Now, why is it? Why is the E-band better than the KAKU band? Well, I'm glad you asked. Well, number one, what is the E-band? E-band is basically from 71 to 76 gigahertz or 81 to 86 gigahertz. It's a microwave frequency band that is normally used for point-to-point -point communication. And it is used today in backhauling and front hauling of data through the mobile networks, all right? So number one, why is this better? Well, the E-band is relatively unused, which is great. This portion of radio spectrum, there's not a lot of people there. So less people means that there's going to be less interference. That's great. Number two, the E-band is a large bandwidth, so it will allow for extremely high-speed communications. Number three, the E-band is a relatively short and condensed wavelength, so it will allow for smaller and lower-cost antennas to be installed at these ground stations. Saving money is a good thing, right? Number four, the E-band is less affected by atmospheric absorption and atmospheric conditions in general. So it can transmit signals for very long distances with very low power. So to sum up, the E-band provides more data, faster speeds, less power, win, win, win. And of course, there's that fourth win. The fourth win, of course, would be lower cost for each one of the antennas that get installed at these ground stations. So the E-band is going to be a major factor, speeding things up, lessening congestion, lowering latency going forward in 2023 with these brand new ground stations that we see that are being built, as well as those generation two satellites that will be equipped with E-band communication. So are you located in one of these areas that I listed? If you are, once again, you're going to get faster speeds, lower latency, probably less susceptible to congestion. 
There's going to be a lot of positives coming your way if you are near these locations. So anyways, guys, I hope you've gotten some good information out of this video or at least found it entertaining. If you have, please throw the video a thumbs up. That would be awesome. Also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel as of yet, please consider doing so and then click this button over here. So when I go live or when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years, and hopefully there's something there that you might like, and if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for the end of the vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.